Facebook Pure Urology viewers, good evening one and all. Today our topic is buccal mucosal erythroplasty basics. As you all know, stricture urethra was once upon a time managed by dilatation, let it be filiform or agar dilator. Later on it changed to uh, the OIU optical internal or visual internal erythrotomy. We all know that more than 1 cm OIU will not succeed long run. All we need is permanent uh, procedures, but last two decades beyond doubt proven that the graft uh, replacement uh, has given better results. In between, lot of senior surgeons have done uh, the flaps. Uh, flaps are difficult to do and we think that skin flaps local are easy. You need not harvest from other areas, but somehow uh, the technology, the, the literature did not accept uh, with as much uh, enthusiasm as in the surgery shown. It takes 3-4 hours, a nice trimming also, but uh, over a period of time the stretchability of the skin in the penile region makes it less comfortable as a tube. Ultimately, buccal mucolithograft uh, stayed back. So let us listen from uh, one of the surgeon in Delhi who is focused and who is interested and who does all the other work also. And uh, I am happy that we got connected through the our pure program on Facebook and we came to know each other about uh, Dr. Ashish Kumar Saini. He is also from All India Institute of Medical Sciences. Before I read out his uh, CV, uh, I will let him uh, speak about his career. Good, e good evening, Dr. Ashish. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh for giving me this opportunity and uh, I really appreciate the work which you are doing. We are getting a lot of international as well as national uh, residents, faculty who have been immensely benefited by this program. There are a lot of right. things. Uh, your channel is uh, also doing amazing work and uh, kudos for that. And uh, sir, I started my journey as a MCS resident from AIMS. Uh, in 2008 and... Uh, you were in the Institute of Medical Sciences? Yeah, I was there in uh, AIMS from 2008 till 2015 and uh, I did my residency, then did my pool job as a research associate. I was a faculty there for close to four years. Oh, and, easy. Very good. Yeah. And then uh, after uh, being assistant professor, I shifted my uh, gears and I, I was then the head of urology. Uh, initially, I was the chief urologist as R.B. Stone, East of Kailash. Okay. And then, then I was the head of urology at Primer Super Speciality Hospital, Chanakya okay. And in the year of COVID in 2020, I sa started my center, Excel Advanced okay. Urology Center. So this is a 15-bedded uh, pure urology center. Very good. Very and, uh, good. Uh, uh, since then, I'm working here. And uh, That's thank good. you for... Uh, who, who, who was your mentor in MS? Where did you do your MS? My, I did my MBBS and MS from KGMC Lucknow and uh, Dr. Dalela actually was the first person to whom I was uh, initiated into urology uh, uh, when we were in my MBBS days and then in MS. Uh, he also mentored me for a few months and in MS uh, basically uh, Dr. Pavo was there and then Dr. Shankar was there so it was a uh, you are native of uh... You are native of uh, Lucknow or Delhi? No, no, I am actually in, from none of these places. I am from Saranpur. This is uh, in Western Uttar Pradesh. And uh, we then we decided to be here in Delhi. And mm -hmm. now I have my center here in Greater Kailash Part 1. Which one? The Greater Kailash? Greater Kailash Part 1. The GK1 in New Delhi. Not easy to have own center in Delhi. Very nice to know that. And you are doing also uh, you you are you are uh, very good cycling or you do very good cycling also na yes sir i, I had uh, when did you develop this interest of cycling sir this actually developed through one of my friends from aims and he was doing cycling and then he invited me to one of the morning groups and then uh, after one or two rides i decided that this is one of the best exercise oh. so now I am into endurance cycling. Uh, uh, sweating uh, and the heart rate raise with the cycling? Yes, yes, sir. Your heart rate will uh, actually there are there may be uh, the heart rate is basically consistently raised, and uh, so that it is one of the uh, best exercise for 
endurance and for uh, do you think that indian roads are safe to go daily 30 40 kilometers like that then actually we we do a lot of uh, uh, homework when we are cycling so there is a group where are around 20 30 cyclists and we plan the the map and then there are uh, some senior senior riders who are there to tell us and to be in the front and in the back and then we have proper lighting and then we do it so basically delhi roads are still very good they it also the how it's also a profession i think yes uh, some yeah. people are doing it so basically what i would say is that uh, we should always cycle in a group and uh, you should have a cycling partner so that yeah, yeah. Uh, so then then only otherwise it is uh, it is dangerous boring and it is difficult also i didn't know that uh, you people have seniors and like this the reason i'm sorry for the group who are listening this is also important lot of urologists are there in the group we all started encouraging each other and health is also important that's why if anybody's career is taken their uh, pluses also other than urology should be taken into consideration with this introduction i will uh, take the program and before that i will introduce officially so today's session pure urology focused on surgical techniques bng erythroplasty buccal mucosal graft erythroplasty basic principles dr ashish kumar shaini from uh, dr shaini is the director and founder of excel advanced urology center he is ex assistant professor urology aims new delhi ex director and hod primus super specialty hospital new delhi his areas of interest are endo urology and minimally invasive urology as he has already worked in robotic surgery uro oncology naturally you will have interest he has an average experience of 10 years performed more than 6000 urology surgeries his papers on uro oncology robotic surgery invasive surgery got published in many national and international journals active member association like usa north zone usa uh, and eau so with this introduction we also the reason why i have given ashish is see this is one surgery we are listening from one or two people for a long time so other people perception like where they put graft how much thickness they will take or, or whether they close the graft in the mouth or not what type of criteria they take in the urethra this all let, let us listen to my knowledge i think dr dogra sir is there uh, when you are there and uh, we used to picture surgery he is a urethral surgeon our ex president i think you might have worked with him all these all the years Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so so I did my I did my thesis where we talked about the erectile dysfunction following urethroplasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This this got published in the Journal of Urology, and uh, oh, Dr. Dogra was my mentor on that. And uh, all thanks to Dr. Dogra and Dr. Said for uh, uh, providing yeah. us a platform to do those Both cases. Both of them are excellent uh, human beings and great teachers. So with the uh, memory of them, we will start the program. and over to you dr ashish please take time go slow let us this be a good memory to the juniors thank you right uh, can you uh, can you see my screen now uh, no, at the moment no you have to share yes. yeah i am able to see your screen so i am able to see your screen yes nice so uh, today we'll be talking about the PMG urethroplasty the basic principles uh, we will be talking about uh, buccal mucosa as well as the lingual mucosa and uh, where to use them what are the advantages what are the disadvantages and this will be i think a good session for the residents who are planning and for their exams also and so coming over to the basics of urethroplasty this is the most important slide and we generally get a mcq question on this there was the difference between the buccal mucosa and skin and why the buccal mucosa became so famous uh, looking at this diagram you see this is a subdermal uh, there are two plexuses on a normal skin graft so basically this is the skin and if you take the dermal also then it's a full graft if you do not take the dermal then it's a split thickness skin graft so it has two plexuses one is a intradermal and then is a subdermal plexus versus uh, in a buccal mucosa the plexus is more robust and it is a pan laminar plexus the other thing is that the lamina propria is very thin in the buccal mucosa and because of these two factors there is a rapid imbibition phase and therefore the graft uptake is very good when we use a buccal mucosa so this is a uh, graft which is uh, now we were talking about we had a introduction on whether we should use the tubes or the patches 
So basically, initially there were uh, penile skin tubes, which may be uni unipeps or a bipep tubes, which were used for the grafts. And the advantage, which was told, was that if it, there is a very long structure, you can actually uh, use a tube right from the penile urethra up till the bulbar urethra. You can tunnel it through the scrotum to reach up till the area of the bulbar urethra. So that was the advantage given to those uh, flaps. There was a Mackinnon's flap which was coined for that, but it was found that the restructure rate was three times. And there was a study which uh, was uh, done by Lumen et al. and then reported by Barbadi, where they found that at six years of age, when we have done the urethroplasty, at six years of follow-up, it was found that these tubes uh, were patent in only 46% of the cases versus a patch which was still patent in around 78% of the cases. So that is, the fact that if somebody asks, the tubes have a greater restructure rate uh, versus a patch. Now, where to place the graft, whether you should place it ventrally, laterally or dorsally. So we'll be talking in this discourse uh, where we need to place them. Uh, usually, uh, if it is a previous OIU, if the patient is uh, obese, you have to look into the overall some patient may be thin built, but when we look into their perineum, they may have a lot of fat in that area. And therefore, it is very difficult to reach to the dorsum of the urethra in such cases. So in these patients, a ventral or a lateral graft can be placed. And uh, uh, looking into the graft, which can be a lingual mucosal or a buccal mucosal, if you are using it on the ventral side, a buccal mucosal is better than a lingual mucosal graft. So that's the physiology of the graft intake where the first stage is imbibition and uh, the initial two days are very important. There has to be an exchange of nutrients, oxygen and metabolic waste and the graft is without the blood flow. So at that point of time, the graft will appear white. And uh, as imbibition occurs, the second stage is inosculation. And there, there will be a formation of anastomotic connection between the host and the graft vasculation. This stage is favorable in the buccal mucosa because uh, it has a very thin lamina propria. And therefore, now the graft begins to have a capillary refill. And then the final stage of revascularization occurs where there are established uh, blood vessels. And this is how the graft uptake physiology is. So what is the ideal condition for any graft? You should have a well-vascularized host bed and uh, there should be a rapid onset of imbibition. There should be good opposition and immobilization of the graft. So that is important where you oppose the graft, you immobilize it by using sutures, you quilt the graft and there is a rapid onset of inosculation. Uh, if we do not follow these principles, the fluid may accumulate under the graft there may be a sharing of the graft and there may be an infection of the graft bed. Uh, looking up to the types of graft used in urethroplasty. So today our topic is on the buccal mucosal graft. The oral mucosal graft can be from buccal mucosa. Lingual mucosa, it has been popularized by Dr. P.B. Singh in India from Banaras because in uh, Varanasi there are a lot of people who are tobacco chewers. So you won't get a good buccal mucosal graft from these patients. And lingual mucosa doesn't have the submucosal fibrosis. And that is where uh, they used to take the graphs from this area. And they have good numbers of paper on this technique. I found it to be less painful. Uh, this is easier and faster. And uh, then there are the skin graphs in form of penile skin and the skin behind the ear. Now I'm coming over to indication of the buccal mucosal graph lithoplasty, it can be BXO which is Belanitis erotica obliterans. Uh, there may be a failed hypospedias repair. The penile skin may be insufficient where the person has been circumscribed initially and uh, for strictures in the bulbar urethra. Uh, looking up to the harvesting of the bulbar mucosal graft. So basically we use the inner cheek area and the lower lip. Uh, we have to respect the parotid uh, duct, which is known as the Stenson duct, and uh, which is at the second molar and uh, the angle of the mouth and the outer lip are also you need to have a margin you submucosally inject you can use normal saline as well as you can use a local anesthetic lox card with adrenaline and the graft is lifted submucosally over the bacinator muscle 
So this is the area uh, where this is the area of the stents and duct. So you need to have a wide margin here. So there are two types of graft anatomy. You can have an oval shape and avoid graft, or you can take a rectangular graft. A rectangular graft is usually taken when you are taking a graft for a second stage repair. If you are taking a primary repair, then an avoid shape graft is the one which is used because then it uh, fits into the urethrotomy which we have made into the urethra. And uh, take a five uh, millimeter margin because otherwise the angular stenosis will be there and there will be a shortening and opening of the mouth may be difficult in such patients. This is the where we use this retractor. This is a very good retractor from Kalilka in Pune. And uh, Pankaj has been helpful in guiding me with all the instruments when I was starting my center. And uh, an adequate exposure is important when you are taking this graph. So you uh, do a very thin, you do not take any muscle over it. And usually, uh, if a thinner graph will have less morbidity, you do not need to take thicker graphs because you do not have to take the, the fat, you have to defat it. So better not to take it from the primary side. And a thinner graph will have lesser morbidity. And I do not close any of the uh, graph from the buccal mucosa because if you close them, there may be some amount of uh, problem with the mouth opening. So, uh, Coming over to the lingual mucosal graft. So this is the area between the papilla. So basically that's the area of the frenulum and this is the papilla. And in between we can take a, a lingual mucosal graft. You have to work over the genoglossus muscle and you avoid the frenulum at the tongue base. And uh, at the base there is a water duct that also needs to be avoided. The length depends upon how much, if you want a smaller graft, then uh, these uh, lingual grafts are better uh, for a shorter stricture. For a longer stricture, better to stick to a buccal mucosal graft. So this is where I am infiltrating it. And uh, I always mark it. You can use a pen or you can use a methylene blue to mark the graft. Marking is important because then you only know where you are cutting and you should cut under vision. Uh, take, uh, these are the chromic or the vicarin stay sutures which are taken and then uh, the system will help you in guiding. So a suction is used both as a guiding force for traction as well as the area where we are dissecting. So I always use a curved scissor so that it follows the plane of the tongue or the, or the cheek. So one can see that it should be a thin graph, only the mucosa which we are taking. If you take such thin graft, uh, there is no problem? There is no problem, sir. Uh, Actually, a thicker, th thicker graft doesn't, you have to defat it. So basically, there is no need to take anything much more uh, thicker than this. Yeah, very nice. So you don't want to unnecessarily take all the fat and muscle and they try and cut it so that morbidity is less. Yes. Absolutely. So, so you are attacking on your finger and uh, slowly going deeper. Absolutely no bleeding. So this is the graph which has been taken and depending upon the tongue size, the graph may be smaller or a longer one. Very nice. So too many, uh, too many stay stitches you are not taking and you are just uh, uh, applying traction with your index finger of the left hand. Yes. So you follow the curve of that finger and then you follow the scissor and then you develop a plane and do it. Which company scissors you use? Sir, this is a, a local scissor. This is uh, nothing fancy about it. Fancy about yes, it. Uh, 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 it, you can use a carbon tape or, or a golden handle scissor, but it's yeah. not required. So then in the lingual mucosa, it is important you need to close these graphs. And uh, I always use a continuous suture, a running suture, and uh, in uh, that is a Vicarin 3.0 or a 4.0 can be used to close it. The advantage which I have found is that the patient can take solid food right from day one of the surgery. So after so lingual hours, mucosa is not kept open. lingual mucosa is not kept open. No, it is not kept open. I always because close it. So this is how it looks once it has been closed. 
So now coming over to the which one is better? So the results of uh, the the BMG or the LMG or the lift graph have been same, and but the lift graphs have been found to be significantly thinner, and there is uh, some necrosis in the area of the lip, which has been reported at around 3.4 percent cases. So that is something which is a very dramatic complication reported. So I usually avoid a lip graph. Usually, uh, when we used to initially do the urethroplasty, we would like to take a graph right from one cheek to the other and taking the lip graft in between for a very long stitcher. Uh, but then uh, I think that taking it for such a long is not needed and you can take from both the cheeks and avoid the lip area. So uh, what are the advantages of buccal mucosa over the skin? Uh, the advantages are that uh, it has a high density of blood vessels and the blood vessels, they grow rapidly. And it has been found that it has a similar Immunohistochemistry. So basically, the cytokeratin and the immunoglobin expressions have been uh, found that it has a very good local defense. So this graft is very much immune to any infection. So if the patient is not infected, if you have already done a culture, I always do a urine culture and the culture has to be sterile before we are taking these patients. It has to be sterile, otherwise your uh, urethroplasty graft may be eaten away. And so this is a graph which is uh, easier to handle and it is uh, less prone to infection. And there is a less of graft contraction compared to a skin thickness, a skin graft, a skin thickness graft. And therefore the buccal mucosa has an advantage. It has an inherent advantage. And now coming over to the types of graft placement, uh, where you should place it on the dorsal only. Uh, so basically an only and inlay technique is simpler that and only is where you do a urethrotomy and then you place it over. Dorsal onlays are where you are fixating the graft onto the corpus conjusum and then you are uh, putting a, a urethrotomy. And dorsal inlay is where you are approaching it from the ventral side and then you are not cutting the entire urethra and from the inside you are putting the graft. That is the dorsal inlay. The advantage of dorsal inlay is only for a graft which is having a good urethral lumen. If the lumen is, is shorter, then a dorsal only is the one which is favorable because once you have done a full urethrotomy, the amount of lumen which you will create will be certainly more than when you are not doing the full urethrotomy. Similarly, there is something like a ventral only and a ventral inlay. Ventral inlays are usually used when uh, the urethral lumen is so small that you want to do a double phase, phase graph. So you place a dorsal only and a ventral inlay. A ventral only is something which is done over the corpus conjusum. And uh, this is done in patients who are obese, those where uh, uh, they have an OIU or those uh, urologists who are just new to urethroplasty and they want to do it. In such cases, the ventral only is a, is a simpler technique where just by going onto the urethra, you can reach to the ventral part, make an incision, and proximally also you are able to place the graft in a better way. So uh, this is, dorsal is better according to Barbegli because uh, the urethral lumen is more towards the dorsum. Fistula formation is less and there is no casting process. The other is that on the ventral corpus conjusum, it is having good blood supply, but it is not that firm. So since it is not formed, there will be circulations, formation can be there when you place a ventral only graft. So um, uh, this is what we have discussed. Uh, a dorsal only may be difficult in a morbidly obese patient where a multiple OIU has been done. And therefore in such cases, a ventral only is better. And uh, in the results, they have been found that the success rate is around 85 to 90% in both the series. So uh, if the patient already had, there may be certain patients where the urethral stents have been placed in such patients also, better to do a ventral only. And uh, in a patient where they already had a failed urethroplasty, uh, there will be a poor bed for the graft and therefore instead of going again on the dorsum, you should be on the ventrum and do a ventral only. Looking into the sutures, uh, this is important. You depends upon the training which you have done. Uh, I used to uh, 
do PDFs for some time, but then I found that uh, there may be some sutures which are passed uh, while voiding in certain patients when a PDF suture has been done. So currently we are using Vicaril only. And uh, usually a 3-0 and a 4-0 Vicaril is what is required. You should not go for a thicker suture because then the inflammatory reaction will be more and uh, there will be further stenosis and further narrowing of the graft. So better to use a finer and an absorbable suture. So looking into the concept of urethroplasty, you need to adequately mobilize the urethra and you resect up till the healthy purposes on you. So this is a, a patient where there is a suture and the patient is on an SPC. It's an obliterative suture. And uh, this is the area where the suture is. This is the obliterative suture in this area. And in this case, uh, once we have put the, the male dilator, you can see that this is the area, the white area, which is the area of the suture. So, you, so most important is that you adequately mobilize and then you spatulate for one two centimeter so that that will take into account the 20 to 30 percent contraction of the graph. Usually, the normal urethral lumen is 30 frames, so our aim is to make it at least 24 to 26 frames. By when the urethral lumen is around 10 frames, then the urethral uh, symptoms of decreased flow will start. So, there is another 16 or 20. Uh, 16 French of diameter, which is still there to uh, tide over the crisis. So your aim should be that you make at least a lumen of around 24 to 26 French. And uh, the sutures, which are said is that if you use an uh, graph lithoplasty, you can use an interrupted running or a normal running suture. This is the ventral only because this is the pectoral diagram where they have put it on the ventral. I'll be showing you a ventral only and a dorsal inlay technique in the coming slides. And uh, usually the it is done through a midline perineal incision and uh, you separate the bulbocarbonosis muscle. You apply the retractor. The, the Lone Star retractor or the retractors now are available. The metal retractors are very helpful. And uh, I think your job is made easily if you have a very good retracting system. And uh, once you have mobilized the entire bulb of urethra, you incise the stitcher and then you place the graft or the Foley's catheter. So this is a patient. This patient is around 60 years old. He is diabetic. He has CKD, adult ADPKD. And uh, there were two OIUs done in the past and then he came to me. And this is the area where one can see that the stitcher is there. This is the most difficult area to treat the, the pino bulbar and the penile junction because there is a watershed line in these areas. So uh, once we have mobilized, we are taking the graph. So this is the buccal mucosal graph which has been taken. So this has he has a good mouth opening. So we are able to take a thicker graph and we'll be splitting the graft into two. So a smaller graph will be placed onto the dorsum as an inlay. And this will be as a ventral only. Always dip the graft in the antibiotic solution. And this is once we have uh, done the urethrotomy in the area of the bulbar and the penile region. After mobilizing the urethra from the ventrum, now on the dorsum, we are fixating this graft. Most important is that you uh, take adequate control of infection, give a good antibiotic, and the copious irrigation should be there throughout the procedure. So once this dorsum has been done, we again, we put a catheter, and the catheter now shows that the, the dorsum has been fixed properly as an inlay. And over this, we'll be putting the, the second, which is the, the graft onto the ventral part. So this is the Lone Star Retractor, the blue one which we are seeing. And this is the graph now it is placed. The other, the mucosa side is inside. And uh, after sutures, the sutures are continuous sutures and we are using Vicryl 3.0 and 4.0. So this is 
So one can see that a adequate lumen has been created, and this is the graph which has been placed ventrally. So this is a double phase graft which will provide a very good flow to this patient. So this is around four centimeter of graft, and this is how it looks in the end. So looking at the outcomes of uh, this ventral graft lithoplasty. And uh, the ventral only was actually started by Moray and Macken. They were the ones who pioneered this technique, and their success rate, which they found, was around 100 percent. But in the other series, which have been so, the success rate is around 85 percent. Coming over to dorsal only by Barbagli, and uh, this was uh, after the ventral only was described first, followed by the dorsal only. And uh, the urethra is rotated 180 degrees. And uh, then once it has been rotated, we do a dorsal urethrotomy. And then the buccal mucosa is then fixed over it onto the urethrotomy margins. If you look at the uh, outcomes of this by Barbagli, the outcomes are around 92%. And usually it is around 80 to 85% in patients. And where their uh, the patients have cardiac issues or they have diabetes or they have a coronary artery disease, the success rate may be coming to around 60 to 70% because of the decrease in the blood supply to the area of the penis. Now coming over to dorsal inlay of SOPA technique and this technique was widely practiced when I was in Ames and this was used for a pan and urethral stricture. And uh, the beauty of this technique is that it is faster and uh, you can approach the urethra in a short span of time with a very small midline incision. We will intersecept the entire penis into the perineum and then we do this technique. So there is a ventral sagittal urethrotomy. Then we do a dorsal full thickness urethrotomy to reach to the corpus pongiosum, the tunic albuginia. And once we are at the tunic albuginia, we again dissect around and the graft is placed around the raw area of the tunica albuginia. The margins of the graft are sutured to the urethral plate and then you do the quilting of the sutures. So the importance is that if you look at the anatomy, the bulbar urethra as well as the penile urethra, they are supplied by the circumferential arteries and there are a lot of nerves which go from the lateral aspect. So this technique avoids uh, going into this, these nerves and there is a better preservation of erectile dysfunction when you are going through this route rather than uh, mobilizing the urethra. So that is the drawback when we uh, look into the Barbagli's technique that when you mobilize 180 degree, there are chances that you uh, have taken the blood supply, the circumferential supply of the urethra from both the sides. And therefore the lateral or the dorsal lateral urethroplasty of Kulkarni became popular because of this. But this Asopa technique we found that we are actually in the midline. And that is the one of the better techniques for a patient where there is an end for thickness. So this is where uh, usually uh, this is the buccal mucosa which has been placed in the midline. After doing a ventral dissection, we have gone into the dorsum and then placed the, the graft here. We have quilled the graft as seen on the right side and then it is tuberized. This was the paper which was published in 2014 and uh, for the similar type of stricture rate and they found that uh, the blood loss is lesser in a SOPAS technique, the operating time is shorter and the success rate is similar to what it was in a Barbagli's only technique. Uh, most important is that you should have a good dressing which prevents sharing movements. So the first dressing is the most important dressing you need to uh, immobilize the patient for the initial 24 hours and the dressing should not be changed before five days unless it is soiled. And uh, it's better that the patient is uh, given not the solid food so that you avoid a bowel movement for the initial five to six days. And uh, usually we keep these patients for two days in the, in the hospital and then they are discharged and advised to have a complete bed rest for at least five to six days initially. So this is what is recommended. Looking over to BXO, uh, this is something which is a difficult uh, thing to uh, operate upon and to give a satisfactory result. 
So this is the slide which shows that in what patients of BHO you should go for a one stage repair versus a stage repair. So if the patient is less than 70 years of age, if he has come for a primary repair, the only problem is a decreased flow. Then in such patient, you should go for a one stage repair. If the patient is elderly, there are already multiple failed repairs. The patient had UTI, the patient is on an SPC. Uh, there are severe disease and precancerous changes on histopathology. And there is a full thickness involvement of the glands, meters and the penile skin. And in such patient, you should do a stage repair. And in the stage repair, because it is a BXO, we need to open up the urethrotomy, place a graft. And then after three to six months, we can retubalize it. And uh, in a one stage repair, one can do the, the SOPAS technique, or one can also do a lateral technique. We'll be showing you one of the lateral techniques in the coming video. So this is a lateral graft urethroplasty for a pan and structure. And uh, Basically, it is around uh, 10 centimeters stitches. So we have splitted the graft into two. And uh, most important thing in this is that it is not an entire lateral technique. It is a dorsal lateral technique. So the distal part of the graft, which is near the metas, is dorsal. And then it rotates and then it comes on the lateral aspect. The beauty of this technique is that since you are not mobilizing the entire urethra, you are just mobilizing one part of it. So uh, Initially, when at the meters, you take some interrupted sutures and these sutures are taken not from the skin edges, they are somewhat undermined the skin edges so that the contraction is lesser. Once you have placed this graft inside the meters, then you uh, imaginate the entire penis and this graft is now brought. Now it is, so this is, this graft is actually dorsal rather than lateral. So this is this is a dorsal area and then there is a graph which is lateral to it. So these are the two graphs which are then joined together and uh, we do the irrigation and then once this is done, we close it with Vicryl 30 and uh, after putting the catheter, one, so this is how the, the catheter has been placed. And it is a good meters area. And uh, one can see that in a near operative structure, it is easily, we are managing a lumen of around 24, 25, 26 French. So that should be, so this is a 14 uh, French catheter. And then this is the lumen, which is almost double to it. So that should be the principle when we are doing these urethroplasties that the graph should be at least two centimeter of width so that you have a lumen of around 26, 24 to 26 strength. And then the closure is done in layers. I usually don't place a drain in any of these patients. If you feel that you are in the initial part of your learning curve and there is some amount of oozing, you can place a drain. Uh, it is better to be uh, safer than to be sorry. And uh, then you remove this drain afterwards. So to strategize, to optimize the graft intake, uh, we should always have, you see the width of the urethral plate. If it is six French, then better to go for a two-stage repair. If it is more than six French, or if there is a very dense structure, then one can excise that structure and uh, on uh, do a ventral, uh, do a dorsal only and uh, do a roof strip anastomosis. One can also use a double phase graft in such patients. Uh, the second stage should be done after six months and uh, you should always, uh, you mobilize it directly laterally and then you do an interrupted running sutures. You can also use a split thickness graft if it is not a patient of BXO. And uh, otherwise a buccal mucosal graft is what is required. Some people place it in the first stage. And some people say that uh, for the first stage, you just uh, lay it open as a Johansson's urethroplasty. And then in the second stage, you place the buccal mucosa and then you tubularize it to complete the procedure. And uh, so use a good retractor. Retractor, as I told that a Jennings Teak retractor is the one which is very good when you are using it for the mouth. And then in the perineum, you use a good uh, self-retaining retractor. Do not 
think that your assistant is going to help you with the uh, with the exposure because they may be tired after the surgery. So better that you should keep yourself comfortable as well as your assistant, and then do the surgery in a peaceful mind because it needs a lot of uh, uh, it needs a lot of composure. You cannot be angry. You cannot be in a hurry to do such surgeries. This is a uh, any reconstruction needs a lot of patience and a good exposure. So uh, this is our goal has to be around 26 French, and you take a 2 to 2.5 centimeter wide graph and account for the contraction. So always prepare the stitcher until healthy tissue is reached. Most important is that sometimes people do not mobilize it proximally, and therefore when they are putting the graph, they are actually putting it somewhat distant to where the lumen is obstructed. And that is the reason that you feel uh, there is a contraction of the graft, in, especially in the, in the proximal part. So in fact, what I have found is that the nasal speculum is something which is good, where you pass on the nasal speculum, you cut to the uh, part of the urethra, and then you place this, uh, the sutures there. So if, if you... Uh, Cut to the chairs where, where you are not putting it proximally, that area will contract. And then uh, people can have anastomotic ring structures at the proximal and the distal part of the, the mm -hmm. raft. And usually the RGU, what I have found is that it underestimates the length of the structure. Uh, Tony Mundy doesn't do and uh, he relies on the RGU, but then they are doing their RGUs for so many years. In, we do all our RGUs in our uh, uh, through a fluoro and uh, which is more dynamic and so that we know where the structure is and uh, therefore uh, most important is a pre-op evaluation in form of a retrograde urethrogram as well as initially you should do an endoscopic evaluation to look into the gray urethra and to look into the healthy pink urethra. So what is the best technique for urethroplasty? If a patient has a failed previous urethroplasty we have to do an excision and a redo. We can do a ventral graft or a ventral flap because the graft uh, dorsum has already been used. If there is an extension into the urethral sphincter, better to do a ventral flap technique. If there is a full length anterior structure, you can do a full length flap or you can do a dorsal or a ventral flap, but usually uh, the full length flaps can be used not as a tube, but as a patch. And in the salvage cases, Go for a two-stage Johansson's urethroplasty. Thank you. Thank you. So that is a good presentation, very basics and a very cool and calm presentation. Now I will uh, close the screen with your permission and go for the quiz questions, common things which we use. Okay. Uh, given choice, uh, a structure of three centimeters, penoscrotal junction distal to perinoscrotal junction everybody uses dorsal only lateral graft will you use the same or will you go for asopa if so when asopa when dorsal only sir asopa technique i will use when i have to go to the distal part of the penile urethra for a proximal penile urethra or a bulbar area we would use a lateral technique or a or a dorsal technique my second question, if the structure is close to the proximal bulbar membranous region, if you do dorsal, we feel that there is an area where there is no bed. Between the two carpora cavernosa after dissection, there is no bed. In laparoscopic ureteric buccal mucosal grafts, you keep nice buccal mucosa on the soil without suturing to anybody and wrapping with the omentum. Do you think that if you put the graft in between the carpora cavernosa in the loose tissue, which is uh, which is a normal tissue but uh, not a tissue like carpora cavernosa, so do you think that the uptake will be less? In that case, should we ban buccal mucoerythroplasty for proximal bulboerythral junction? It is not banned yet. I am asking little roughly. Why? Because when you when you nicely dissect buccal mucosa, there is a chance of nerve injury, there is a chance of vein injury. After that also buccal mucosa cannot be put as a graft between the two carpora cavernosa. So is buccal mucosal dorsal only is valid for the uh, 
for the proximal bulbar urethra basically for the proximal bulbar urethra you can still use it most important is that uh, when you are using a nasal speculum you visualize where your sutures are going you cannot put a blind graph there for a for a proximal bulbar which is going into the membranous a ventral uh, a ventral only is something which has been favored in the literature ये माय थर्ड क्वेश्चन वेंट्रल ऑनले अप टू व्हाट लेवल यू हैव टू मोबिलाइज द यूरेथ्रा पोस्टीरियरली इन द सेंस आउटसाइड यूरेथ्रा नॉर्मली यू कट द बल्बस पांजोस मसल यू गो ऑन यू रिट्रैक्ट देम यू गो ऑन टू इट ऑन टू इट एंड पेरिनियल मेम्ब्रेन रीजन विल कम विल यू रिलीज दैट दैट मच इज नॉट नेसेसरी बिफोर दैट कैन यू ओपन द यूरेथ्रा Or we should mobilize the perineal body if it is a proximal one. If it is not a proximal structure, then you do not need to mobilize the perineal body. Now my fourth question: When spongiosum is opened, it bleeds very badly. You some people say that you give a gauze piece and don't do anything. Some they say that you put interrupted one to one point five centimeter breadth catgut stitches. especially the areas where any small spotter is there some people you can do a running suture continuously in that case you cannot put a venter on lay there is no meaning a suturing entire entire spongiosum so what is the best method can you apply a can you apply a small can you apply a small uh, um, uh, during av fistula you apply na clips bulda can you apply bulldog for a short period of time in the distal urethra and do the surgery because it will be oozing continuously so how to how to handle the lay open ventral urethra so usually uh, i haven't use a bulldog i haven't bulldog is my idea uh, not i'm, I'm not that uh, uh, regular surgeon but i do a lot not very regular uh, expert in uh, urethroplasty buccal mucosa but i am asking generally how to control the ooze of a 5 cm lay open uh, ventral urethra for ventral only the basically uh, uh, the compression will help for some time and if there are certain users they you can take a suture in that area otherwise uh, quilting it all together will be a problem for the final urethroplasty so basically my uh, usually it doesn't bleed that much when when we are cutting we uh, we are still using some amount of cautery we are not cutting it right with the with the scissor and uh, then the thing is that uh, some part of sutures can be taken but taking a running suture all across is uh, not going to be helpful in such patients okay uh vicryl 40 versus monocryl 40 versus uh the pro, the Uh, PDS 40. Uh, please mention the one advantage and one disadvantage. What you have felt? The vicryl is something uh, which we have used, and uh, I that's the suture which I have started with. In initially, what I found that in PDS, the PDS the handling is better, the knotting is better, but the fact is that there may be knots, there may be some part of sutures which the which may with the patient may say to you in the follow up that they they have been uh, when they are passing urine there are certain amount of sutures material which comes into the urethra so this happens and uh, when i was operating in one of uh, cases at am there was this lady from uh, belgium and she said that she has also experienced the same thing where the sutures are being uh, per urethral they have been uh, voided by the patient and they are using a pds suture do you think that the needle of the pds is the most user friendly than because why can i feel that it is a good needle less traumatic but you have to use force because it is a traumatic needle vicryl is taper cutting it does not come in round body but uh, recently i have seen pds in laparoscopy uh, even though needle is small 30 is okay 40 is okay and uh, so much you can pull after 3 4 rows also in continuous suture and uh, it will sit nicely and chances of uh, uh, bacteria entrapment in a non braided suture is more logically worldwide there is a some shift of the uh, suture material towards the uh, pds yes. in in any surgery pediatric uh, urology hypospadia pediatric surgery lot of uh, seniors are also doing you you are, you, you still like vicryl as of now na 
Microsoft. You do do you think that five zero with double end both ends needles is more useful or because it is trained to the eyes uh, to suture five zero? Yeah, I think that four uh, zero is what I use four usually. Four zero is recommended. Okay, when you do panurethral stricture. uh i have a doubt recently i got a case practically i am asking don't mind there is a long panurethral stricture came with retention spc kept after two weeks we attempted to pass a strict, uh, the guide wire from the below at the meatus and submeatus only it is closed then we attempted spc guided guide wire it went and came out through the glandular urethra normal meatus after that we used alken rod and then over the alken rod up to bulbar membranous region we dilated with cook dilators which went easily up to 20 french then i have taken the ou sheath and went in the reason why i am asking not to say that what i have done is correct a good great or nothing like that in case of panurethral stricture with severely closed lumen after doing spc if the stricture gets closed if you dilate it forcibly can it be used for buccal mucosal graft erythroplasty afterwards now the patient is on 14 french 16 french catheter two days you remove two days you remove it and go all mucosa is intact stretched may may not be very healthy definitely but can we use this entire urethra for opening and do a buccal mucosal graft erythroplasty yes sir it can be used there are certain centers especially the one from hamburg and okay. uh, uh, and what she did is uh, Uh, Dr. Mardi and what uh, she presented this paper in uh, where what she was doing is that in the first stage she was just doing an OIU, a pan OIU, a very robust OIU from right from the bulba urethra to the penile urethra. Okay. And then, then after a period of two to three weeks she was putting the buccal mucosa. Okay. So basically uh, this is what she presented. and uh, uh, it can be done yes but not many seniors are ac accepting this and uh, they are telling that on table whatever it, this is a panurethral stricture because there is no area which is good and it is a very trauma to the patient if anything happens because more than 10 cm graft may be required okay my next question is lingual graft when do you prefer as a primary graft not as B bmg failure primary graft if the patient has a uh, submucosal fibrosis okay there has been extensive uh, chewing if the patient is a habitual tobacco chewer in north india na yes it is it is very common especially from the eastern U, uh, up part where they, they actually oh, yeah. did the pan masala in their mouth and they kept it for overnight so oh, yeah. so basically there is lot of cancer also as well as, as submucosal fibrosis and yeah. in that patient you should use a lingual graft urethral plastic okay and if it's a very short stricture if i have to use one or two three centimeters then we can take a lingual mucosal last few questions when you do culting so much do you think that mobilization of the patient and separation of the legs walking all that matter some people strongly recommend give some days rest what will happen just it will take the bed some people say you have culted with hundreds of sutures how does it matter if you move limbs if you go to toilet and stretches the legs uh, what is the logic behind giving rest for few days so the rest is basically done because uh, in the initial phase the graft is in the imbibation phase so when you are the patient is walking there may be a traction onto the catheter there may be a sharing of the graft because of the catheter okay. so therefore it, it is better that the patient uh, he has already opted for a surgery which is it's a difficult surgery to do per se and then you need a so there is nothing if he uh, sleeps for one or two days there has been a question on quilting like dr dogra doesn't like quilting he said that there is nothing to do but ultimately maybe they you can do not a extensive quilting you can do three or four sutures yeah, some people do extensive quilting suture dikh jata hai aur buccal mucosa nahi dikhta hai so yes. how the cell will survive Yeah, that then in that case there, there may be a problem of more fibrosis. So yeah. Better, yeah. So we should uh, do a minimum amount. Mucosa should be treated only to not to move and not to get little bit of uh, hematoma below that. I think so. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So three three lines in a vertical is a favorite nowadays by all. Vertical three lines, one center, one either side, and then suture the edge. 
yeah so last uh, two questions uh, in case of redo do you think uh, if the anatomy is disturbed uh, put a foley's catheter open directly and put a ventral inlay and come out entire urethra especially proximal urethra yes you should uh, uh, do a, a ventral only in such yes yeah last question for stabilizing the urethra apart from the guide wire which instrument is better regard dilator or foley's catheter sir it, uh, i usually don't use either of them and uh, uh, you can look into the urethra once you have dissected uh, the urethra is seen and then by the your thumb movement so basically your thumb movement will guide whether you are looking into the uh, urethra or into the catheter and in then case, uh, i will ask a question when you are opening the urethra in a structured area did you I ever last uh, did you ever last the track and you have to do spc and then pass a guide wire did it ever happen that no what I, what i do in such cases is it happened uh, i think 6 months back uh, in the proximal part uh, actually when i was putting the nasal speculum it went laterally uh, parallel to the urethra so nothing was visible so what we did was that uh, we injected methylene blue into the just uh, into the bladder and then luckily we were able to see it coming out then we placed the guide wire and then uh, Uh, we dilated it with the guide wire after dilating it to the guide wire then we did a, a scopy and then we uh, put the graft so many pe- many people believe that 4 by 6.5 urethroscope is a boon in urethroplastic surgery do it assess the urethra assess the lumen assess the white patches assess the proximal extent of distension and pass a thick guide wire come out then get a, get something in your mind before Uh, doing this uh, dilatation or OIU, just gentle six four by six point five urethroscopy up to the bladder and uh, measure all the areas properly, visualize them, memorize them, and open and do the surgery. And benefit of doubt, as you said, do error one centimeter more than less. That's yes, correct. Sir. Correct. So in in la- longest follow up, we are concerned with the restenosis. So if you are thinking that. you want to make 30 french why not 40 french to make it less stenosed does it have any sense wide urethra maximum wide because if somebody is saying 30% it will go if you on 25 years 30 years patient if he comes back after 40 years definitely it is not a good surgery because another 20 30 years he has to live so what is your gut feeling to avoid this 30% restenosis of the graft Sir, basically, uh, a wider lumen. More than that, difficult to make. We can think about it, but then the fact is that there, there is a certain amount of space which is there. Yeah, unnecessarily. If, if you further dilate it, it may actually lead to a decrease in the vascularity. Decrease the flow also, and it may may not uh, this thing. So ultimately, we cannot put whatever the way we want. Uh, my my concern is only in a severely stenosed leg than six French. Uh, Uh, you always put double on double double graft double face sir if the patient is older if the patient has cardiac issues if then i would go for a two stage surgery two if stage. the patient if patient is younger and uh, only diabetic certain morbidity we will do a double face otherwise we would like to do a two stage my my small doubt in stooge you lay open and put graft then only or later on you will put the graft No, I I put it later on because what I found is that in Indian condition there is a contracture of the graft. Okay. So Again, in the second time, open, second time you put the graft and then close it. That is the way. Yeah, yeah that then to close it. Yes. The results are good. Two two stage. So the results are around fifty to sixty percent. Sixty. Cannot be. Uh, it, it cannot be more than that. More than that. Very nice answer. So overall, it this disease is a morbid disease. You cannot take things lightly. and nobody should give 100% guarantee and i think uh, in practical terms our consent form should say probably 70 to 90 70 to 85 little wider range depending on if the length narrowing uh, they 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 should be ready for a simple oiu or maybe small dilatation for few years after that if they are lucky they will pass urine freely and we don't intervene otherwise after 5 10 years they may require one more similar surgery like that so with this uh, Uh, I, I think you have for, to be honest. This is useful for the uh, first five years who wanted to do buccal mucosa who doesn't have exposure in their unit 
many DNB institutions are there. Buccal mucosa is becoming less common surgery. So our exams are also there. This is a nice talk for them. I really appreciate this will be very useful because initial slides, graft, uh, physiology, how they imbibition, everything is useful uh, because seniors won't be talking so much detail. So it helps a lot as a documentary in pure. So I really thank once again uh, for the talk. Thank you very much, Ashish. Thank you.